I was 90 July the 20th, and I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I was uh, in a family of uh, six. There were four girls, had a wonderful father and a wonderful mother, and lived in a, a very interesting community. It was segregated, but I must have had an old soul. Um, I was interested in people even then. I wanted to take art. My parents never seemed to have uh, worried about what I had to do. I went to the vice principal and told him I wanted to take art. He said, well, you know, you, are, uh, you can't take art until your ninth grade. I went and sat into his office for one week, and he got so tired of seeing me, he let me join that art class. That was the greatest thing that could have happened to me. I went to Spelman College. It was connected with Atlanta University at the time. I had some wonderful art teachers. I majored in art. Hell Woodruff was uh, one of the most important uh, African-American artists. Uh, there was an art teacher that came um, for a few weeks, well, maybe um, six weeks, to teach us. I got a scholarship through the Rosenwald Fund to a college uh, called Black Mountain. I had um, eight roommates and Rufus Sala, perhaps some of you know of Rufus Sala. She was a sculptor. She lived in San Francisco, and her art is all over San Francisco. I had other uh, interesting people that I met at Black Mountain, and every time I pick up a book, I see something concerning Black Mountain. It was a school of the time. I met my husband on the campus, and he was a Tuskegee Airman pilot. And we became engaged and we got married. And I left Atlanta, I think in 1955. When I moved to um, Campbell, the first thing I did was to join the NAACP. San Jose was a very, um, only had a few black people. But um, San Jose made it possible for uh, the blacks to move all over San Jose. Now, it wasn't like that at first. When I moved out in Campbell, there were about 10 men on the corner. Now, I was washing dishes uh, at uh, my sink, my present sink and taking care of my business, but my husband had his ear to the wall, listening to everything that they were saying. They were gonna bomb us, and a lot of things they said. We were not welcome in Campbell. We were the first family. We moved there because uh, the NAACP asked us not to move on the east side of San Jose. They were making that a ghetto. In fact, similar to what they did to the Mexicans, uh, in a certain section of San Jose. So as blacks came into um, uh, San Jose, they moved all over the area. And this is how I moved to Campbell. Um, my son uh, was about five years old and I think he was to be first grade. I can't quite remember. Anyway, I took him over to the elementary school and the principal said, do you think you're at the right school? I said, yes, I, um, I'm sure I am because I only live several blocks away. She didn't know that there were any blacks around. Once you make up your mind like I did when I was in high school to take her, I, I guess you have to keep pestering people until you get what you want. And sometimes you don't get support but you continue to do what you think you know should do, you should do, and you involve other people. You make things greater for other people. You share. That's one thing you have to do. You have to share. You can't do this all by yourself, and you can't enjoy all this by yourself. And I think that's one of the most important things that I have enjoyed, sharing my art, being with art, being with people, sharing with people, and giving of people. 
my eyes have always been open and my ears have always been willing to listen and I find life very interesting. I've always had good friends and I'm one thing I'm not by myself. I'm not the oldest person in the world. I'm not the only person that can fall. I'm not the only person that turn gray. I have company. I have friends I talk on the phone and we, we laugh about ourselves. And I think you have to laugh at yourself.